Hello, thank you for joining Maths Digital. My name is Aaron, and today we are going to continue our discussion on version routines. Last time we saw how to do validation of user inputs on field level and how to default values using validation routines. Today we are going to see input routines. Input routines are used for cross validation, meaning you can validate multiple fields at the same time, or you can validate a field based on another field. These types of subroutines are invoked after validation, but before saving the contract or the record into an authorized file. Below are the typical steps that you need to take when creating input routines. First of all, you need to write your subroutine, then you compile and catalog. After that, you need to create an entry in eb.api with the name of your subroutine. Lastly, you need to attach your subroutine to the version you intend to use for validation. You do this using the field 63, uh, which is called input routine. Now, let's practice. We are going to assume that the bank wants to have a version or user screen which is going to be used only for the same currencies. Uh, let me show you. I have a version for fund transfer. It's called ftmtd.test. Let us create a new fund transfer record. So I do AC, a debit account, let's say my account in US dollar. Let's say I want to transfer 45,000 from my USD account for this date. The credit account, let's use our GBP account. My GBP account is this. Obviously, this GBP. Okay. If I validate, as you can see, the contract is validated. We can view this FT. And you see. All right. This is the normal practice. So, uh, the bank would allow you to transfer money from uh, one account being in uh, one currency to an account with a different currencies. This is normal practice. Now, let's assume the bank wants to restrict this. The bank wants to have these versions only being used for transferring money in the same currencies. So if the debit account is in US dollar, we should have a credit in US dollar as well. So if your account is in Euro, so the credit account will also be a Euro account. So let's restrict our version. From here, I can create a new file. Let me name it uh, MTD, FT, input, same currency, or same car. All right. Now here, I can do T24 subroutine. We need to check if uh, both debit and credit currencies are the same. So we do, if, R dot new ft dot debit dot currency meaning we need to use now we need to insert also a fund transfer file so I can do this and the file the insert file is funds dot transfer so we check if if the debit currency is not equal to credit currency if the dot credit dot currency then let's raise an error 
To raise an error in T24 routines, you use eText. And the error you want to raise, you want to say uh, debit and credit currencies are not are not the same okay now for input routines we need to position to a certain field when doing this validation so to do that we use rf which defines the position of a field so we can position ourselves either on a debit currency field or credit currency field uh, it doesn't matter or even on a different field like account like debit account let's position ourselves to the last field a credit currency is the last field let's position ourselves to this field and and for input subroutine we need to call a subroutine called store and error so our subroutine is ready so let's repeat again we are going to check if debit currency is not the same. Actually, I misspell here. Yes, R dot new. It's R dot new. Sorry. So we are going to check if debit currency is not the same as a credit currency, and then we position ourselves to this field, a credit currency, and we raise this error, debit and the credit currencies are not the same. Actually, you can just omit R. Not the same. And then we call this subroutine, store and error. So let's create our subroutine on T24. So I type JED, mathc.bp, and the name of our subroutine is this the enter let me grab the source code so copy i'm going to paste the source code here control v then escape a file to save to compile our subroutine we use basic no errors then we need to catalog. All right, catalog successfully. Let's go to T24. We are going to move to the next step. Uh, the next step is to make an entry in eb.api with the name of our subroutine. Okay, so here is the name of our subroutine. We go to T24. We do eb.api let me use a comma version since i don't want to authorize this record we can say input routine to validate ft currencies let's keep it short like this i say full or none our source codes are basic source codes all right we are done with the second step now the third step we need to link our versions with our subroutine so we're going to attach this subroutine to the version so for that we need to edit our version let me also use comma version our version is called ftmtd.test so we need to go to field 53 it's a multi value in this case dot one and we attach our subroutine like this all right we are done let me log out and test our subroutine We are going to create the same transaction and see if uh, this validation is going to work. 
with the ft mtd dot test i we get a new ft we say ac debit account keep the same our current account in uh, us dollar the amount 45000 I uh, can keep the same date, it's okay. Credit currency, we see our account in the GBP. And the currency is GBP. Like this, there's no validation until I do validate. All right, as you can see now, it's saying position the field number 13. Number 13 is credit currency and it says debit and credit currencies not the same all right as you can see our validation is working now we are going to test this in the browser and see if it's going to behave the same way okay i'm going to log in with a different user all right so our version is called ft mtd.test I create a new transaction here yeah, I can use AC I run current account this is in USD let's transfer 56,000 on this date credit currency let's use the same account in GBP and the currency in GBP. Let's validate. All right, as you can see, it positions on credit currency and outputs the error. Debit and credit currencies now the same. Congratulations. So as you can see, you can perform different validations. If you want, you can even position on this account, but you've got the idea. Thank you. I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. You now know how to perform cross-validation. Please subscribe if you haven't. Share and like this video. In our next video, we are going to see how to use authorization subroutines. Stay tuned. See you next. Bye-bye.